I'm Hannah from Kitten Lady. Hi, I'm Chelsea from Turbo Two Legs. So Chelsea's awesome. She uh, has uh, adopted two cats that have paralysis. And today we're gonna talk about helping paralyzed kittens go to the bathroom. So Chloe is a kitten who I rescued a couple months ago and she is unable to go to the bathroom on her own at all. And Turbo is a kitten that I rescued two years ago and he is able to go to the bathroom on his own, however he has no idea when it's coming out. So he wears diapers. This week, we rescued a kitten together named Tilly. Yay! And she's also paralyzed. And so the first thing you do when you find out there's a paralyzed kitten is figure out how they go to the bathroom. It's really important because you need to know how they're going to be getting all of their pee and poop out um, because if you don't know, it can be pretty dangerous. By the time I got to the shelter, Chloe had been there for two days and she had not been able to pee at all. So her bladder was literally a third of her body weight. It's really dangerous because it can rupture. So the first thing I wanted to know is, can this kitten pee on her own? And it turns out with Tilly, yes, she can. If you're rescuing a new cat or kitten that has paralysis, the first thing you want to figure out is how do they go to the bathroom? If their backside is wet and their abdomen is soft, then probably they're incontinent. So another way that you can tell is by palpating the bladder, just like grabbing under their abdomen and feeling around. If there's something that feels very large and like a little balloon or like an egg that's in there, that could be a bladder. Um, you would want to get them to a vet immediately. You can't, you know, wait over the weekend until Monday right. um, because you want to make sure that you know how to help those kittens. We knew that Tilly was incontinent because her backside was was soaking wet, um, and actually, like when we went to pick her up, a stream of pee <laughs> came out of her. So I was like, "All right, so her bladder goes." So the way that I deal with Turbo's incontinence is I put him in a diaper all day, every day, all night, every night. He's always in a diaper. <laughs> Does he like his diaper? He doesn't care about it. He doesn't even notice it's there because I guess he can't feel it. He actually licks his diaper as if it's part of his body. Like I'll just hear this weird like plastic noise and I'm like, what <laughs> is that? And I'm like, I look down and I'm like, Turbo, why are you licking your diaper? Like, it's not even part of you. <laughs> That's so cute. Yeah, well, it kind of is part of him then. So basically Turbo, um, you know, anytime he gets stimulated, he just urinates, but he has a diaper on, so it's not a big deal. Exactly. I can stimulate him to go to pee a little bit. I use baby wipes and stimulate him a little bit, and then just put a diaper on, and the rest of the day he kind of goes by himself, and then I change his diaper again. So when you're getting ready to do Turbo's diaper, what do you do? Um, so I have like a little station set up for Turbo. Um, I have my wipes, my diapers, and food. Basically, the main key in changing his diaper is distraction. So <laughs> what I do is I open up a fresh can of food and let him go to town. Then I get wipes, kind of wipe him down, make sure he's cleaned up, there's nothing that could cause an infection. Then I just cut the tail hole in the diaper, take his tail, pull it through the tail hole, and it's actually weird. People always look at me weird when I'm changing his diaper. They think that I am like pulling his tail, but like I'm just pulling it through the hole and he can't feel it. And then I put the diaper around him and pull it through underneath and then just strap a little straps on. It literally takes five minutes tops. You become a pro at this when you do it every day, many times a day. And then you just put it on just tight enough that it's not going to fall off, but also it's not restricting any kind of blood flow or anything. And um, I just take the old diaper, roll it up, and um, call it a day. So that is Turbo's diaper routine. I'll oh, thank you very much. That actually sounds way easier than yeah. I thought. How often do you do diapers? I do diapers on an ideal day, it would be like three times a day, but mostly I do it two times a day, like once before work and once after work. So what do you do with Chloe?
Ideally, I will carry her over to the toilet and I'll express her into the toilet because that's a little bit less like paper waste. You're so good at using the toilet. Sometimes she doesn't like that, so then if she's distracted, like if she's doing something or if she's just chilling, I'll like sneak a puppy pad <laughs> underneath her. And then basically you try to think of your hand as like two flat pieces. You know, if you can do it with two hands flat, that's even better. And it's like a water balloon, so it right. like sort of slips around and that's okay. <laughs> you know, and so I just find the center point of it and then just kind of slowly compress. And as you compress, her tail lifts up and she just pees onto the pad. She has a stream of urine. And then this just gets packed up and thrown away. With her poop, she just poops. And she poops, you know, like very healthy poops. Sometimes when I stimulate her to go to the bathroom and then others just like on her own. I feel like <laughs> intimately acquainted yes. with Chloe's like urination and elimination. Yeah. <laughs> and if that sounds weird, it's like, well, no, if you love an animal, you care about making sure that they can have a healthy body. And, you know, peeing and pooping is part of having a healthy body. That's, that's life. We all do it. It's important. Everybody poops. <laughs> <laughs> Like the way that I look at having a kitten that has uh, bladder issues is that you just have to treat them like they're a dog. So you have to come home a little yeah. bit more often. Like right. you just have to be available a couple times a day for Chloe. It's like three to four times a day I express her bladder. I think it seems a lot scarier than it is to have a cat or kitten that has issues with their bladder. When I started doing this with Chloe, I was so worried that I was doing it wrong because I thought there was a right way to do it. There's this awesome online group, Cats with Paralysis and Mobility Issues, and I would post on there and say like, am I doing this right? Like, am I holding her right? And then what I learned is everybody holds them differently. It's just about getting to know the cat. Now that I have cared for a kitten that has bladder issues, it makes me so upset to know that there are kittens and cats that get euthanized just for this because it's really not a big deal. I'm 24 years old and I have friends, I swear. <laughs> um, and I, I go out on the weekends and I have fun and I have a full-time job and you know, I can still have, I have two paralyzed kittens now and like you shouldn't take on something if you really feel like you can't do it, but it's not as hard as it seems. So I just want people to know that you know, if you want to rescue a cat that has these issues, don't be freaked out by it because like if we can handle it, anybody can handle it. It's easy, it's fun. Easy, breezy, beautiful. No. Easy, breezy, and beautiful, peeing your cat. <laughs> Always good. Um, yeah, no, I don't know. I can't think of anything else.